Hello guys, um, in this video I'm going to try and go over some key features of what uh, the best stocks out there tend to have and hopefully you can identify them before those stocks get moving so you can be in them um, for the short duration, the medium duration and hopefully the long duration so you can compound your gains. Um, where people say uh, I can't find the best stocks or how do you find them it's too hard I get lost there's so many you know thousands of stocks around the world so hopefully um, this video will help in some way and uh, give you some tips and whatnot maybe it will add to your process and let's see if it's of any benefit at all um, firstly yes we do need to pay attention to where we are in the uh, macro cycle or uh, the business cycle and where markets have come from etc uh, what's been the most recent moves and whatnot best ways to think about that is through different data points and generally how business cycles develop uh, in the early phases and the later phases um, so once you've acclimatized yourself with that then uh, and only then should you start thinking about right where should i be invested etc and another way to think about it is if you're a longer term investor is stocks generally go up to be quite honest um, yes there are periods of where you can have uh, uh, very big drawdowns uh, in recessions and whatnot where you can have on an average there's been a drawdowns of 33 percent but those um, get uh, those dips quote unquote painful very painful dips get bought and uh, markets tend to make higher highs over successive years or decades and, and for those who are the long-term patient investor tend to outperform assuming you can find the better stocks um, but this doesn't mean you can't hedge or go short during these periods as long as you know what you're doing otherwise um, just find a good stock and add whenever there's um, significant drawdowns because a good stock remains a good stock and compounding your gains is a great feeling and is probably the best way to generate uh, wealth from stock markets uh, so once you've uh, acclimatized from where you are there obviously using macro data but this stuff can also be shorter term whereas just having a healthy perspective over the longer term you know where will markets be in five ten years time etc what would the world look like in five ten years time etc is always a great point from where to start from uh, once you've done that um a quick exercise you can do um, and this is uh, uh, very easily done especially with the spreadsheet i'm going to show you and some of you might want to compare the charts on the same uh, on the on all on one chart but i'll show you uh, on independent charts here is the etfs because the etfs uh, break down the u.s stock market or any stock market by um, different sectors and here we can see the S&P is doing done very, very well over the last 20, 30 years. So fantastic for those investors there. Um, but you can break that down to see which ones are responsible for most of those gains. And once you go through it, well, the obvious places are um, technology, uh, which is the XLK or triple Q. Um, and you can break that down into various different other ETFs. But let's just go take, 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 don't take, take take technology even there and then which other ones have done really really well and those are consumer discretionary which is xly again you can see it's you know nearly parabolic um, and then the other one that i like to draw your attention to is ihf which is medical products now you can look at it with all the charts on the same on the same chart those three charts are the top performing and once i go through them as to why they are the top performing it will make complete logical sense um, but if those are the top three performing areas that's really where your portfolio should be guided towards so that's technology uh, consumer discretionary and medical products um, if you want to prove that those are the best stocks uh, in this year or any given year what you can do like I've shown in previous videos is the stock screening exercise stock screen different equities around the world um, uh, for all different markets whether that's Europe you know US or Australia Japan China UK doesn't matter just stock screen them and see which ones have the best 
growth for that year or growth over the next two years. They will invariably be medical stocks, medical product stocks, technology stocks, and consumer discretionary stocks. So that will prove it um, from a uh, from a numbers point of view, a statistics point of view. Um, and you can also see this through the um, uh, the helpful link that I put right at the end, and that is through these set of links here, where you can sign up for earnings uh, uh, earnings growth revisions, etc., for sectors in the United States or Europe or Canada, etc. And they will show you that those are the sectors that are always outperforming. So, why do they always outperform? So we've gone through the statistics and whatnot, or you will go do and go and do that, do some homework here. Very easily done. Just check out my most popular video, the holy grail of um, trading the Metastock icon platform, where I go through the different parts of it, of the platform, and you can stock screen different uh, different stock exchanges around the world, and you'll very easily come to the same conclusions that I've come to. But logically speaking, why would those um, ETFs or why would those sectors outperform every other sector there is well it's quite simple really um, uh, if new technology comes online that gives you a five or ten percent advantage over a competitor or makes your life easier or saves you time etc you're going to use it uh, you know uh, people to there are people today born who've never seen life before google you know it used to be much more difficult trying to travel to places or uh, find information out etc before google and now you've got youtube you've got netflix you've got amazon you've got apple and all these different gadgets and gizmos that make life easier uh, you can do everything with a click of a button you know gone are the days where you have to go to the bank and queue for hours and hours and hours and hours um uh, just to get very simple things done. Now you can you can get mortgages applications done within clicks of buttons uh, on your mobile phone, etc. Or make trades around the world as well. Um, and there's and if you have products like that technology, and it makes everybody's life easier and better, and gives them more free time, you're going to use it. Therefore, there's an insatiable demand on the business side, on the consumer side, for technology um, in all of its forms. If you can, if, if it gives you technology to employ less people, so you become more profitable, you're going to do it. If technology gives you uh, a better environment where you have electric vehicles or green technologies, you're going to use it. And you can see that in the iClean ETF here as well, which has recently gone parabolic, retraced, but it's going to continue. So that's technology. Why we, why human beings keep adopting better technology because we want better things and we want a better, a better life. In addition to that, better technologies also manifest themselves in consumer discretionary. We want better things in our houses. We want to do better things. We want to enjoy our lives. We want to go and see concerts. We want to uh, eat uh, better products, etc. And that's where consumer discretionary has outperformed as well. Because human beings, when we have some disposable cash, we want to enjoy what time we have with our friends and family, loved ones, etc. Hence, XLY has also performed incredibly well. And then the final one, medical products, and that is, well, if you do start having health problems and if you do start, um, uh, if you want to improve your health as well or maintain your, your health, you want the best possible medical products. You're not going to going to want something that gives you 10, 20 percent less chance of of a positive result. You want the best and you'll make as much noise and kick up as much fuss as you can to get those medical products for yourself and for your friends and family. Hence, medical products has absolutely shot through the rough roof. There's the most risk there uh, in these uh, areas, but it's also the most amount of growth because the total, total addressable market is huge. It is everyone. everyone wants, everyone wants a better quality of life, wants better health, wants better things to do in their spare time, and wants to use better technology. It's as simple as that. Um, so hopefully now I've reasoned why those three sectors are outperforming and will continue to outperform in my opinion. Um, but that's just my opinion. Uh, and why year after year they have the, the stocks which outperform everything else. Um, so then, okay, so we've narrowed it down there, but then what else, what other traits are we looking for? Um, and they can be summarized. These are traits that I look for and that I, I, I tend to um, think are things that people should be looking for as well. Uh, 
qualities of the best stocks I uh, have, reoccurring revenues, scalability, competitive advantage, uh, leadership who have performed well, uh, founder-led, uh, so to speak, large TAM, which is total, total addressable market, so something that is billions of people can do ideally or need, um, and stocks that have a large uh, compounded annual growth uh, rate, which is CAGR, both in the sector and in the company. So is this a growing sector? So for example, electric vehicles, it's a growing sector, right? There's going to be many ways to play that, but there's going to be many winners there as well. Lots of growth, obviously, for new tech, new medical products, consumer discretionary. People want to have it and they must have it. Therefore, there's going to be lots of growth there. And once the products get approved, say medicals, then people will have it. Once people know more about it and consume discretionary, everybody will want it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, high gross margins are always great because then in unstable times, they still got great margins and they'll still be able to maintain uh, profitability. Uh, a new market, aka themes, and all the new themes and, um, and new markets are opening up in technology, healthcare, and consumer discretionary. By definition, you need new things in those sectors. You know, things like commodities or automotives or um, um, gold or bonds, etc. They're not growth. There's nothing new in them. There's there, they are things that you play macroeconomically or energy or oil, things like that. I'm not saying you can't make good money playing those markets. It's just if you want to find the best stocks, that things you can put money in there and go to sleep and not worry too much about it. Um, these are the um, traits that you should be looking for. There should be increasing numbers of customers or uh, uh, people who are buying their products. Uh, increased spend by each customer as well is also a great sign. Insiders buying is also a good sign. Uh, is it hedge fund owned? Which type of hedge funds, etc.? Uh, uh, don't think about where the stock is right now. Think about where it will be in the future, three, four, five, ten years. What is it like? Uh, what can they do to make this business even better? Uh, what's the competition like? And remember, all of this data, everything I've gone over here, is all on the Metastock platform. That's why I like the platform and why I've started this channel. Um, all the data is there, and if you go back to that original video that I did, um, the Holy Grail of, um, uh, of uh, Holy Grail of trading the platform, you know, I go through where you can find this data on the platform, whether it's stock screening, whether it's the information about uh, margins, uh, peers, uh, uh, the growth rates, and um, etc. And then when you start researching the stocks, you'll find all the other information. Uh, or just keep asking simple questions. That's it, really. Um, and other stuff is don't be scared to look at micro caps and things that are below 1 billion and things that are 100 billion. You know, 100 billion stock can get to 500 billion. Uh, Amazon once was 100 billion stock and now it's 1 trillion. You know, some people would say, oh, it's gone too far when it's 100 billion. Well, clearly not. <laughs> so, and don't be afraid to, yes, the United States is the biggest, you know, it's the 800 pound gorilla. It is the strongest and most beastly market out there. But that doesn't mean there isn't, aren't great stocks in Europe or UK or Scandinavia or Australia or Japan, etc. And over the long term, over like 10 years, currency hedging doesn't really matter that much, you know, because in 10 years time, you know, a million pounds or a million dollars, that's still a lot of money. Um, uh, so have a, have a look at that as well. Um, and read a book called... Um, uh, one Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch. It's a great book, or alternatively, just find a summary on YouTube. There are several, and you'll find some very, very similar things I talked about there, and um, and some of the things I may have even borrowed from Peter Lynch there. But a great way of looking at the markets is a great way of looking at the markets and absorbing what you can from different approaches to make your own approach um, and uh, to, to make yourself better. There's nothing wrong with that, is there really? Um, so that should be enough information for you guys. Um, now just go out there and research stocks insatiably. Uh, please do go back and watch the video of um, the Metastock Trading Platform. Um, again, all the SEC um, information regarding stocks is publicly available. So by, by definition, uh, companies have to tell you what they're doing and how they're doing it. Um, so... Um, uh, they should be shouting about it and it should be easier to, for you guys to find, especially using this platform. 
Um, and when you have all of this together, chances are you should be able to find a couple of winners every year um, and things that you can hold on for multiple years. So hopefully that's really helpful. Um, if you like the video, do you like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and then also do use the referral link if you think Metastock is of um, interest to yourself. Um, otherwise, guys, I'll see you in the next video and all the best of luck with um, everything that you're doing.